guys, so today I'm about to do a whole bunch of pre-filming and I'll get into why that is here in just a second, but um, I thought it'd be fun to come on here and do sort of a chatty get ready with me video using some of my Shop My Stash products for this month. I actually think that would be a really fun series to do on my channel. So one, at least one, maybe two um, sort of get ready with me videos throughout the month showing me actually applying the products that I've picked out and put in my drawer. You guys always seem to like those sort of shop my stash videos that I put out. So I thought what I'm missing is I try and swatch things when I do those videos, but what I'm missing is me actually putting them on my face. So today we're going to do just that. I'm going to kind of chat you through the makeup that I'm putting on my face. And then we are also going to kind of talk about some life updates some things I wanted to share with you guys. So hopefully that combination of sort of life stuff and makeup stuff appeals to you guys. So I always feel like these chatty get ready with me videos end up incredibly long. You have no idea how much footage I cut out before I upload these. Uh, so let's go ahead and just start applying some products to my face. Uh, my face is washed and moisturized. I am not going out in the sun at all today, so I have skipped sunscreen. Not something I typically do, but I know I'm pretty much going to be sitting inside of this bedroom with no light on me other than these ring light uh, for the rest of the day. So I'm going to go ahead and start with kind of sort of a primer. This is a Physician's Formula Spotlight Illuminating Primer. And I'm not gonna apply this all over my face because I have um, a glowy foundation I'm also gonna be using, which is the COIO Life Proof. So I'm going to apply this the way that I have been my Charlotte Tilbury Filmstar Bronze and Glow, um, which may look kind of crazy to some of you guys as you see me apply this because what I have been doing is actually apply it not only, I mean, strategically, um, but I've actually been taking a a super glowy primer like this all the way up and underneath my eye um, and I what I'm finding is that that pearlized pigment reality of being in my house on the weekends people are walking their dogs and my dogs just like to bark so what it was saying was I like to put this um, underneath my eyes and actually um, even though it's not necessarily canceling out any darkness you can still see that there I still feel like it brings some light and brightness to my eyes so I've really been enjoying applying glowy primers that or strategically to certain places on my face where I want that light hitting um, and where I want a little bit of glow and honestly taking it right up here in the corner of my eye right underneath my eye has really been working for me now obviously I'm going to be putting other things over top of this so you're not going to see this intense shine the way you are right now once I'm done with my face my shop myself theme for this month was nothing but drugstore products so what you are seeing on my face today will be nothing but drugstore products um so see why I love life proof shade 101 do really love this foundation it's been a while since I've used it all right, now we're zoomed in, you can see. So I'm gonna do what I always do with foundation. I pump some out on the back of my hand and then I kind of smear it around on my face to kind of get it into place. Um, and then I come in with a beauty blender. So life stuff, I am doing some pre-filming, so I hope you like today's shirt. Um, that is what you're going to be seeing in quite a few upcoming videos because I am trying to get as much pre-filmed as possible. And I think I've talked about this before, like I really struggle to film during the week. Um, I s could make time for it. I don't think I could make the energy for it. Um, I work full-time days and I am not a morning person. So um, although I could get up in the morning and get things done, and I do, having the energy and the excitement to come on here and film and talk to you guys is just, it's not there early in the morning. Um, and so then my other option is to do it late at night. And to be honest, it just, I've tried it before and in a pinch I can film at night, but it's just not my preference. So in general, what I do is most of my filming um, on the weekends. So I will come in here and sometimes Saturday and Sunday I will do some filming. But what I typically try and do is think about what three videos I need to have um, up in the next several weeks and try and batch film um, because that allows me to kind of get my camera set up and get everything set up for lighting and white balance and all those settings to try and get good quality film. It allows me to do that once and then spend most of my time and energy 
um, filming because it's interesting even with having a dedicated space in my house to film and I realize I'm very lucky to be able to have that a lot of people on YouTube don't and are setting and tearing down everything um, I was doing that for a while as well before we kind of rearrange some things in our house um, it means a lot of time I mean it's not a joke to say that previously it would take me 45 minutes to an hour to get set up. And so if you're doing 45 minutes to an hour every time you set up, um, it definitely starts to add up in terms of time because you're spending as much time setting up and tearing down lights as you are filming. So having a dedicated space is definitely helping, but it even still set, takes me at least 15, 20 minutes to set up. So I'm always trying to multitask as much as possible. But I will also say that I need to really plan out my next several months because I looked at my work calendar last week, got my travel organized, look at deliverables and due dates for a whole bunch of stuff, and I realized that I have a ton coming up. Um, a lot of travel, a lot of um, due dates, and if I didn't put a plan into place for how and when I was going to film things, when I wanted to upload things, that I would really be struggling. And I'm gonna use the e.l.f. Flawless Concealer. I talked about this in my favorite uh, drugstore face products that launched for spring. I love this concealer. So I'm just gonna put a little bit here where most of my darkness is, and then I'm gonna blend it out with a sponge. So all that to say, I sat down yesterday and really looked at the calendar and layered in, okay, what weekends am I going to have to film? Because that's the other thing that's coming up. I have travel that's coming up into weekends. So there's a work trip where I have to leave on a Sunday. And so that's ruining a what is normally a YouTube day for me. And uh, we are gonna be gone this whole next weekend to Chicago to see my sister and her husband and my new niece. And so, you know, that's a whole weekend gone. And then I try not to film um, every other weekend when we have Kaylee. Sometimes that means I can film in the afternoons on Sundays because she's gone home. Kaylee's my stepdaughter, I guess I should have said that. Um, and so I will wait until she's gone, but I never want to, we don't have her very often. We have her every other weekend. She lives two hours away from us. And so for me to be able to see her is the most important thing and spend time with her because we don't see, we don't get as much time with her as we want. So I am not going to spend, or rather I'm going to choose to spend my time with her as much as possible versus doing YouTube editing or filming. Sometimes I have to do a little bit while she's here, but in general, I try and avoid that. So what that means is that I usually have two weekends a month that I can do the bulk of the filming for the month. And if any of those get jumbled up, I really start to struggle. So a couple of things that I've been doing is pre-filming, obviously, um, and then also filming content that's gonna get broken easily into a couple videos. So for me, when I film a declutter, I may have to sit here for, you know, four hours and actually film a declutter, but that's actually gonna give me five or six videos of content for my channel. So there are types of videos that I know if I film, I can get more content out of. And then honestly doing things like this, like I have to get ready today to film other videos. So why not turn this get ready process into a video? If you guys aren't familiar with kind of my preferred way of putting makeup on. I feel like it's a little odd from the rest of the world, but I like to lay down my uh, concealer and my foundation first and give them a chance to set naturally on their own uh, versus going in with a whole bunch of uh, uh, powder now, because this foundation is still pretty tacky. If I put powder on it now, I would have um, a lot more of a cakey appearance. It would look a lot heavier. Even if it isn't cakey, it would look a lot heavier. It's the difference between putting powder on a dry surface and powder on a wet surface. Same thing here. So I like to give my concealer and my face makeup a chance to set um, and go into my eyes. And then because I haven't done my entire face, if for some reason I get a ton of fallout and I'm struggling with fallout, I can still pretty easily go in there and correct what's going on on my face. I don't typically have issues with fallout, but if I did and it got to the point where I had to remove part of my makeup, I could do that pretty easily. I haven't done my entire face. So 
that is the order that I go in. I just use the CoverGirl uh, Lid Lockup Primer for my lids. I just like to brush my brows kind of into place a little bit. And then I'm gonna use the Physicians Formula Brow Last. This packaging is a little flawed. It does have a spoolie on one end, which is definitely usable. Um, but the end of the product has the sort of wand or sorry, brush to apply it. It's really goopy when it comes out. So you really have to wipe off a ton of this product in order to get it to be usable. The problem is I want a spoolie while I'm doing this. So I kind of want to put it in my brows and then brush it through a little bit. I don't really have a way to get to the spoolie right now because the cap is what you hold onto. I'm gonna do brows. The nice thing about this brow product though is that um, it locks into place. Like this one, because it's a sort of a, a gel, a creamy gel uh, is kind of the consistency of the product. Uh, it really does, as I run it through my brows here, almost set my brows into place. So although it is a little messy to deal with, the product itself lasts, and then I don't need to go through and do an, another brow gel because I feel like this actually keeps my brows in place as well. Now, I will admit, guys, I do not have the world's craziest brows. They don't go flailing every which way. They actually usually lay pretty easily where I want them to throughout the day, so that may or may not be your experience when you try this product. All right, folks, that's as good as it's gonna get for today. They may be more like distant cousins than sisters, but Hey, what are you gonna do? For my eyes today, I'm going to be using the BH Cosmetics Royal Affairs palette. You guys were very interested in this after my declutter series in terms of um, color tones, and we talked about maybe doing three looks with one palette. I think I'm going to start out kind of boring and go in with the shade Empress, and then I'm gonna deepen up the outer corner with this, and then I think I wanna go in with this sort of warmy copper shade on top. So this is a Wayne Goss number 16. It's sort of a fluffy brush, and I'm gonna take that shade Empress and just kind of push this into my crease, actually more above my crease, which is where I tend to place that transition shade. Um, my crease is very low. So for me to see any color, I have to go a little higher. The thing I like about these newer formulated BH palettes is the mattes are very easy to blend. They are not super powder. You get a little bit of kick up in the pan, but not a ton. They just, they blend effortlessly, guys. Like they are so easy to work with. This is such a beginner friendly formula. It builds, but it's not too intense right out of the gate, but it's also like, it's, it does, it's not like it's not showing up either. I feel like if I were starting someone out in makeup application and they've never played around with eyeshadow before, I would start them with one of these newer BH palettes, either this one or the Love in London. Those are probably the two I would recommend right now from their collection for a beginner, but it's such a pretty easy formula. And then I'm gonna take a Wayne Grass number 17, which is kind of a smaller version of what I just used, pick up the shade Prince, which is a little bit more of a rusty color. And we'll just pop that in the outer corner start to deepen it up a little bit. So travel schedule, I uh, mentioned going to Chicago. So I'm filming on Sunday. We leave on Thursday morning to drive up to Chicago to see my sister and my little niece who is pretty much uh, six months old at this point. Um, I saw her when she was about gosh, a month and a half old, and I just can't get over how much she's changed in that time frame. I'm, I'm not even gonna recognize her. So I'm excited to go up there. We are taking my stepdaughter up there too, cause she has not met her. Obviously she's been in school. We weren't gonna pull her out of school to go meet her new cousin, uh, but uh, she is so excited to meet her and hold her. And um, Kaylee loves hanging out with little babies. Like it's her favorite thing of life. So she is like over the moon excited for Chicago. And then when I mentioned to my parents who are Mimi and Papa to their grandkids, that we were gonna go up to Chicago uh, to see Adelaide, my niece, and then my sister, uh, Rachel and Brett. My parents were like, 
oh, can we tag along? And so I, I was excited that they were interested. So now Kayla gets to spend some time with her grandparents who live in St. Louis. Um, so it will be nice. It will be a fun family weekend. Um, I'm using a discontinued Wayne Goss flat shader brush number 18. The dude seriously needs to bring this back. Um, but this is the other thing I was going to say about this eyeshadow palette is that this just looks incredibly foiled and shiny just with a flat shader brush. Like it didn't even need anything. Like it, it needed nothing else. I don't need to go in with my finger. It picks up, the shimmer shades pick up so well on a brush and they just look wet and foiled on their own. It's quite impressive. So we stay up there through the weekend. We drive back on Monday and we've got couple days at home, we leave again for a work trip. We're home for that weekend, which is Father's Day. We have Kaylee that weekend, so obviously we'll be doing uh, things with her so that following weekend, next weekend. Two weekends are kind of shot for me um, in terms of spending lots of time on my YouTube channel. Um, the weekend after that, I think I will have the ability to film a little bit. Now I wanna deepen up the outer corner just a smidge. It's looking very monochromatic on my lid, which I actually like on a regular basis, but I do wanna deepen it up. And you've got some really nice deepening options in this palette too. You've got this plummy color here. You've got sort of a deep chocolate brown here. You also have this dark gray color. So you really have good options with different undertones. I feel like since this is looking a little warm and sort of uh, rusty pinky color, I think I'm gonna go with this darkest shade in the corner here. And then I'm using a Wayne Goss number 19, which is just a little tiny detailed fluff brush. Then I've got some other work trips planned later in this month. I've got a couple of speaking engagements that I am prepping for, um, one this month and then another one in August to kind of talk to the um, pet community about what we're doing for Monos. And if you guys aren't familiar, I talked about this in passing in a video, gosh, it's been several months at this point, um, uh, about what we're working on. So I work for my dad's nutrition company. It's a pet nutrition company. We help people, um, we help find new technologies. So we help find new ingredients that are super effective on the human side and then um, make sure that they're safe and effective for dogs and cats. So, you know, we're constantly looking for ingredients that are gonna help with joint care or that are going to help with, uh, be better protein sources for dogs, etc. So we're always looking for new ingredients. And then my dad is a PhD nutritionist and have, is actually one of the men who was involved in figuring out a whole bunch of uh, nutrition that actually um, cures different diseases. So he actually was working for Hills Pet Nutrition, gosh, decades ago at this point, um, and actually helped them figure out how do you stop kidney disease and how do you stop urinary tract disease? What are things that you can do just through diet alone that can actually stop and or prevent disease? And so um, he um, has a long history of understanding pet nutrition. And so one of the things that I've been very passionate about is that I think more people should have access to what's in my dad's brain. Um, I think pet parents would be really interested in how, what they can do in terms of how they feed their pets um, and how things work inside of their pets, right? Um, as they feed them different foods. So I think we're all very interested in making our pets as happy and live as long and healthy lives as possible. And I think what's really missing out there right now is somebody who can take that topic of pet nutrition that can be kind of complex and make it accessible, accessible, can't talk, accessible and approachable for people um, uh, just pet parents in general. I'm just taking this fluffiest brush that I started with, number 16, and blending it out. So we decided that we were going to start a 
both a website and a um, just social media platform. Um, it will be out here on YouTube. It will be out on Instagram. Um, it's just us doing it, so it's not a big team of people. It's myself, my dad, and my husband. Um, that will be who is kind of running this behind the scenes. And so on top of our day job, on top of my YouTube job, I'm also trying to stand up this whole other sort of communications platform for pet nutrition. We wanna make it fun. We wanna make it approachable. We wanna actually explain real science, but in an approachable way. Um, one of the channels that I follow on the beauty side is called Chemist Confessions. I love them. They're two women. They're both chemists. They work in the science side of creating beauty and skincare products, and they break things down, and they talk about things, and it's super fun and approachable, and I think that's missing inside of the pet nutrition space. And if I'm being very, very honest and a little snarky right now, I'm really tired of some of the top search results when you are looking for recommendations for food or looking for recommendations for um, nutrition advice um, to be pointed to people who have zero background in pet. Um, I don't want a human dentist being the number one thing that you guys uh, find when you search. I don't want the content coming out from a human dentist. Well-meaning guy, Sure, he loves his animals. He doesn't have a background. So we're trying to figure all of that out. Um, and in the process, you know, I'm not going to hide the fact that like we help build products for the industry. Like I have worked on helping build new products in pretty much any sector of this industry for any different animal. I'm not the nutritionist formulator, let's be clear. But I have helped uh, lots of products come to market through market research and through business strategy and planning. And so that's part of what our company does. And so I'm not gonna hide the fact that I work in the pet industry, but I'm a pet parent too, and I really want what we know to be out there in an accessible way. It's not out there really on YouTube right now, and the blog sites online are, I struggle with a lot of them if I'm being very honest. Um, I just set my under eyes with this e.l.f. Um, this is their Barely There, no, this is their finishing powder from their Barely There line. This is the one that I mentioned in my Charlotte Tilbury video that I thought was a dupe for her press powder. I totally stand by that, by the way. Um, so I just set my under eyes because I'm gonna go in and add a little bit of color underneath my eyes using a little Wayne Goss pencil brush. So we're in the process of getting all of that sort of built out and stood up. And like I said, I'm doing it all myself. In hindsight, like I probably should have, could have hired a lot more people to help us with this um, because we still are doing our day jobs as well. But uh, I, I also want this not to come off as like, I don't want this to come off as super, super corporate-y, super marketing hypey. Like part of what I think makes YouTube great and one of the things that I think that makes me want to watch people is a level of authenticity. They're not overly produced. It feels different than a commercial. It feels different than you hired a marketing group to f shoot a video and edit it for you professionally, right? That's the beauty of YouTube. Like it kind of breaks down barriers. Like I know I don't actually know you guys, but hopefully you feel like you've you get to know me through my videos and I get to know you through the comments. And that is one of those things that I think if you get too produced and you hire marketing groups and all of these people, like you are a big brand that you, it, it loses a little bit of that authenticity. So I'm doing a lot of stuff myself as is my husband, as is my dad. And I'm totally happy with that. But it does mean that it is a heck of a lot of work. So we did decide early on that we were going to tell the industry that we were doing this, right? So we're not gonna make a secret of this fact, like, hey guys, we fully intend to review pet foods and we fully intend to um, talk about nutrition and talk about you know, what is actually fact and what is fiction. And we're gonna lean into this. Um, and we wanted the industry to know that we intended to do this. We weren't gonna just all of a sudden pop up out of nowhere. If I'm being very honest, I was kind of expecting a whole bunch of resistance Real fast, I'm gonna use my highlighter. I'll tell you about this in a second and a little brush just to pop that in the corner. This is a little Milani brush, by the way. This is, they call it a crease brush, but it is the perfect size to just like pop inner corner highlight. I am obsessed with it. So anyway, we've been kind of surprised that the industry has been as open and, um, interested in what we were doing as they are, even though they know that we are not gonna mince words, even though we know they know that we're not gonna pull punches, right? Like if you're saying something that's factually untrue or is not scientifically founded, 
guess what? We're probably going to call you out on it. But in general, the industry has actually been really interested and I've actually been asked to come and talk at a bunch of different conferences about what we're intending to do and how we intend to review products um, so that we're fair, but we're also giving consumers the best information to help them make uh, a educated decision about what to feed their pets. Um, and then the type of content we're gonna be building, I'm just using a powder brush from Real Techniques to set my face gently. This one, because I am filming today, I wanna make sure I powder because I have a feeling it's gonna get warm in here. Part of what's taking up a bunch of my time right now is prepping to kind of share with the industry what we are about to do um, or in the process of doing and when it's going to be ready and what we're going to be talking about and so on and so forth. So for those of you guys who are interested, um, uh, there's not a lot of content out there right now. But we have named the whole communication platform Monos. My dog's name is Satchmo, we call him Mo. And Mo knows lots of things. We've just decided this. He's a very smart doodle. He knows lots and lots of things. And Mo is going to kind of be the voice and the narrator who helps other dogs learn about nutrition. And he is going to use his panel of experts, i.e. myself and my father and my husband, to kind of help communicate his message about pet nutrition to the world. And so that is kind of the, you know, listen, I think my dogs and my cats are like the cutest and best dogs and animals in the world. I think we all feel that way about all of our animals. So why not give Mo a platform to shine? So Mono's is coming, but our handle on all social media just very quickly is um, at the real Mono's and we have that kind of uh, captured for Instagram and Twitter and I think Pinterest and Snapchat and a whole bunch of others. So like I said, we're not actively posting content out there. We're in the process of building this out, but it is coming. For bronzer today, I'm gonna to be using this e.l.f. bronzer. This is light matte. It doesn't look that light in the pan, but it's a really pretty sort of rosy undertone that I really like. And I'm just using a Wayne Goss number 11 brush. It's kind of this pinched shape. Um, if you guys are interested, I did a series of videos. It's been a while, but I haven't really changed in terms of my favorite face brushes, I think was one video. And then my favorite eye brushes was another. And a lot of my favorite brushes are from Wayne Goss, but I also know he is kind of pricey. So if that just seems entirely too expensive for you, I totally understand. Um, I did give some of uh, my best dupe sort of recommendations in that video as well. I will link both of those down below for you guys. Um, for blush and highlighter, so I can continue to keep rambling. Um, so for blush, I'm using the butter blush that I pulled. This is the shade Vintage Rouge. It's a really nice sort of peachy coral color and then for highlight that I've already put in my inner corner. This is the Makeup Revolution Vivid Baked Highlighter Radiant Lights. This is rather old. Um, it is actually probably one of the first drugstore highlighters I ever bought. I really love how these butter blushes apply and I really wish they were in less bulky packaging. Like if you have ever used this foam applicator that's in the bottom of this thing taking up so much space, let me know. I guarantee there's probably not a single person on the planet who actively uses and enjoys that sponge down below. And I really wish that Sushin's formula would take a cue and get rid of some of this like nonsense packaging that makes their products so freaking bulky. So prepping for that, trying to get through Mono's launch, um, and then we've got family coming to stay with us for a week in July. We just went down on Friday night and watched my stepdaughter graduate from eighth grade. She was going to a school that was K through eighth grade and now she'll move into high school. So because they are the senior class in that school, they actually do a full graduation ceremony a la high school graduation. It was, it was cute. Um, and they had a dance and they did like a father-daughter dance was the first dance. Father-daughter, mother-son dance at the very beginning of the dance and then they kicked all the parents out. So we drove down on Sunday, no, Friday, sorry, to do that and it was a lot of fun. It was, it was, it's crazy to see how much she's grown up. Um, so we have busy summer. I'm not gonna complain though, it's good, it's all good things. And I really feel like we are gonna have um, a lot of good things happening 
over the next several months, but it's just busy and it's gonna require a level of just focus and attention and discipline to get through all the things that I need to do uh, without like driving myself crazy. If you know me, you know that the words focus and discipline are like, they are not my key strengths. So I am somebody who is very creative and my brain flies a million miles an hour and it makes me very successful at what I need to do in my job. And I think it makes me um, successful in other areas of my life. But I also know that when push comes to shove, my logical reaction to everyday life is not to have a disciplined plan that I follow every single day. And it's not to have a really dialed in focus on, okay, from eight to nine, I've got to do this. From 10 to 12, I have to do this. Like my brain doesn't naturally do that. And so I really have to like make my make a conscious effort to kind of pull it, rein it in and get myself organized. All right, for liner, I grabbed this little guy. It's from Ulta. It's their gel eyeliner in plum. Um, I like how creamy these are. And it's a really sort of murky plum color that kind of reminds me of what I put in the outer corner. I also like doing liners that kind of blend in with my eye look versus being black all the time. Um, I sometimes find that using a color that is in my existing eye look just kind of, I don't know, makes it a little softer and a little less harsh than a black liner or even sometimes a dark brown liner. Like, see, it's giving my eye a little bit of definition without being super intense. And I really do like this formula from Ulta. You can catch these on sale. They're often part of their, what is it, their 21 Days of Beauty sale. You can often get these for like two or three bucks each, which is a great price point for these. And I find them to be really creamy, blend in easily. So another trick I have, if your eyes are kind of close together the way that mine are, um, I'm doing everything in my power to kind of make them look like they're a little more spread out and a little less close in. So what I will do oftentimes is use a waterline pencil, but only use it for like, from where the middle of my black dot is out. Um, and that kind of helps emphasize the widening of my eyes a little bit. Um, for mascara real fast, just gonna use the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara. I've been loving this. And then just the Comp Crusher Waterproof on my lower lashes. I think I'm gonna do this. We'll see if it's too dark. This is Barracuda from ColourPop. This is one of their Ultra Satins. It's in my Shop My Stash. I may add a gloss over the top. We shall see. Ooh, that's really dark. Hmm. I feel like that is shifting this whole color or this whole outfit look very fall. I don't, it's a pretty color. It goes all this, but I feel like it's making this whole look very fall. This is what happens when I put on makeup. I get my look done and then I try on like a half a dozen lipsticks before I find one that I really, really like. Let's try this Shine 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 lip gloss. I think it may give me a similar color, but be a little lighter. Yeah, that's a little better. I feel like it's a little rosier and a little less intense than the one I had on before. All right, so that is the finished look. I am gonna go curl my hair because I literally still have it in the ponytail I was sleeping in last night. I'm gonna go fix my hair, maybe brush out a few tangles, and then we will be back to wrap up this video. All right, guys, hair is did. The one thing I forgot to do uh, earlier was a setting spray. I'm gonna use this one from Hard Candy. Um, this is their Brighten uh, Sheer Envy spray with vitamin C and rose water. It does have a light rose water scent, so if you don't like the scent of roses, do not do this. But it has a great mister on it. Like it's super fine, and yet you still feel like you're getting product on your skin. And this one I feel like gives me some glow without looking greasy. You know how some glowy sprays can just end up making your skin look oily? 
I don't know as if I see a brightening effect. I mean, it does have vitamin C in it. I have no idea how stable that vitamin C is in here, to be totally honest. But in terms of just ingredients um, going on my skin, I do feel like it kind of melds everything together, gives me a little bit of glow, but doesn't look me make me look greasy in the process. So that's the finished look. I love how it came together. It ended up being a little bit monochromatic, coppery, rosy. I kind of like that uh, look today. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and just kind of a more casual, chatty style video. Um, look forward to chatting with you guys in the comments and I hope you're having an amazing week. Bye.